Welcome to Men, Relationships, and Other Fables. If you want authentic, thought-provoking conversations and insights that transform, you are in the right place. I am your host, Nicole W. We learn and grow from those who have done the work and manifested phenomenal success in business and in life. Today, I have Carrie W. Clancy, the CEO of Yo Baby Cyber Records, and an entertainer who will share a moment of truth that was a breakthrough for his career and business. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Is it okay if I call you Clancy? I saw yes, your bio. That, that's your preference. Yes. Uh, people generally just call me Clancy. On the uh, now a lot of on the uh, albums at on, on the links is Carrie W. Clancy for the reason that I didn't know there were so many Carrie Clancy out there. And when I started doing some solo releases, I'm like. Carrie, that's not me. That's not me. When I go to find my music, another Carrie was coming up. So I went with Carrie W. Clancy. But everybody calls me Clancy. Okay. So, Clancy, please share a little bit about yourself, how you started in the entertainment business, and a moment of truth that was a breakthrough for your career. Well, actually, I started... uh, I initially, I initially started in uh, 1997. I uh, was teaching school over uh, Arlington High School in Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, everybody kept talking about, well, Tupac ain't dead. Tupac's not this. Tupac's not <laughs> that. And, was, and that inspired me to write my first song and from there it just carried it just carried over next thing i know i had completed uh i think there's seven songs on that album seeing what i've seen but i didn't release that album i held on to that album till four years ago i wrote that album in 97 and i never released it and then in four years ago i was doing nurse and i was getting frustrated with uh, I was just getting frustrated with uh, the people around me, uh, the youngsters that around me that just weren't there for the right reasons or weren't showing up when you needed them. And I walked out. I got I, I, actually I got angry. Walked out the door because I had been doing nursing for I've, I've been do, had been doing nursing for what uh, basically my whole lifetime from the time I was a teenager all the way through the Vietnam area war, uh, all the way up to four years ago. And I just quit and said, okay, it's time. And, you know, I kept saying, he'll let me know when it's time to do this. He'll let me know when it's time to do it. And that was the time. And from there I went on to uh, do uh, uh, release that. And that was my motivation. When I, when I got, when I got that out and I got the, uh, a distributor, when I found me a distributor, when I first started, I got that distributor. I said, oh, maybe I can do this. And so that's actually how I really got started. I wrote it back in 97, started writing in 97. And uh, from that point, sat on it because I had other things to deal with. You know, I was still just out of, out of, out of, out of school down from uh, – IU University, not too much long, not too much further than had been. Uh, so I just had other things going on, and I didn't want to be a star. I was I had a daughter, and a baby, and a son, so I didn't have no. Uh, I couldn't be a want to be, you know, a starving actor, you might say. So I sat on it until finally I said, "It's time. I don't have no one I have to take care of. It's my money, whatever little whatever little it was, and I invested it." I had sat on Yo Baby Cyber Records. The name, I'm a Kappa, by the way. I'm a Kappa, I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, uh, Indiana University. And uh, I kept thinking that just stuck with me. Yo Baby Cyber Records. It was like a little something that keep. It's just something for, that really. It was my 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 inspiration to inspire my daughter. It was something to make her proud of. And so, that's what had to start with. so Clancy, so you you sat on. I, I, you you 
you create this album in 1997 and you sat yes. on it and a long it. time you know you had life going on you know and then four years ago what prompted you four years ago to say you know what i'm ready it's like i've deferred this dream well for so was, long now now i am like ready to just bust out well, I, and 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 make a go of it so what inspired you to do that well time was was really what inspired me to, to do this because i was getting um as i was getting close to uh uh Retirement age, uh, at 60. I was, I was getting close to 60. And mm. I said, now is the time. I, I had already I had it was set out. I just, just started to try and put it in motion. I didn't just sit things on the table. I was just waiting for the right time for me. I was waiting for, for the time for him to tell me, okay, now I want you to, this is what I, this is what you're, this is what I want, this is what I, what I want you to do. This is what I got for you. And I knew it was that time, and I and I went for it. I said, I sat on it, I prayed on it for years, and just sat, 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 and I just finally said, it's my time. And I just simply, and I just simply, I simply went for it. But you, you answered the call. You, I answered the call. Sounds to me like you just I, sat in prayer and answered the call. Oh God. Yeah, answered the call. I I did a lot of praying about that for some of the some of the songs that I wrote on that just. Took some took a lot of uh, spiritual insight because uh, a lot of my a lot of the songs that you will see that uh, that I do write have a lot of uh, spiritual insight to them and social awareness and so that's uh, basically it was just time it was just time it was time I you know I said well you know you're not on it on it forever if you're gonna do it now is the time and uh, the time came everything just seemed like just Everything just fell into place. But I would say, though, if you're going to do something, if you're going to do something, you got to, you, you're going to need your faith. You, you, you got to, you can't just say, I believe you got to truly, truly, truly have faith. Okay. I'm, don't step out blindly, but if you know he got it for you, go for it. And that's that's how I will say for that. If you know he got it for you, go for it. Don't let nobody tell you. Because I had a bunch of people look at me and say, "What in the world are you at your age talking about starting starting a record company and writing music?" And I, said, and I thought to myself, "Well, I don't want to be where you are." <laughs> well, you know what? That's a perfect that's a perfect place to to look. Like you know, what in the world? Or, you know, why would you do that? So the next question I have for you is, and, and first of all, thank you for sharing um, kind of like your moment of truth. But, the, but we have a few questions about the real world of business relationships. Okay. Okay. So we did a survey, and we posed this question. What would you ask someone who is successful in business about relationships? So, Clancy, here's the first question. When it comes to knowing who to trust and who you can work with, what has been your biggest lesson? My biggest lesson, uh, guys, is one thing I, I, I must say. If you started off like me, who knew nothing, absolutely nothing about about uh, 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 recording and, and doing records, okay? And if you get out there, you have to have, because if you don't know it, you're going to have to have somebody to help you succeed because you don't know everything. You're going to have to rely on somebody. I couldn't adapt where I have gotten to the point I have uh, gotten to if I didn't rely on on someone. Now, Now, let me say this. Let me say this, that everybody who comes at you does not necessarily mean they're out for you. This is a business. And everybody who says, I'm out there, oh, I want to help do this, they are looking to make money too, okay? Nobody is doing nothing for free. They're making money. Understand that, mm-hmm. okay? They're making money. So when you do it, understand that, okay? When you do it, 
you find you somebody, because me, myself, I had no clue about, uh, and this is funny, and this, this is true. Guys, I'm telling you, until just four years ago, I never even so much as had a Facebook page. Not Ooh. even a Facebook page. Four years ago, I had no idea how to even get into Facebook. My neighbor's little kids showed me. Can you believe that? Kids. Well, you know, they, they – <laughs> little kids know so much more than we give them credit for. Oh, and, and, and I learned so much myself from my little nieces and nephews. So, uh, so it's great to hear that some young person really made a difference for you in your business. Yeah, yeah and, we're really, and we're actually really talking about kids. Uh, well – Nine or ten years old, my my my, my partner's little kids. I go over there or or his woman, right? I say, y'all need some help. I get. How do I do this? How do I get to this page? Well, how did you do that? I'm still I'm still don't know half the stuff that I do. I I have to I I rely on my 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 uh publisher to help me do those things. I just simply don't know how to do. What? So I let me ask you. Do, let me ask you this. How do you know who to trust then? The thing about it is that. You can do some reference referrals. Now, for me, for me, what happened in my case is that I didn't know who who I can and can't trust. Okay, so so what I do you know a, now? Out of your what experience, do I know, what do you? Yeah, what, what do, do I, you know for sure around who you can trust now out of this journey? Uh. I, I I I say you have to trust someone, but I will still always say be aware. Okay, don't be blind in business, but you have to trust someone. You follow up on your stuff. You follow up on your or you follow up on it. Okay, uh, find you somebody who you know that that you hopefully is in it for you because it is about business and they're out to make money as well but they do have your interest in mind. I I was fortunate enough that somebody picked me up and said, I like your music. Uh, um, um, a sponsor picked me up and said, I like your music. I, I just got faith in your ability. They picked me up, and it just, and, and, and it just uh, spiraled from there. I just woke up. One day, next thing in there, I had a radio station. And <laughs> they said, no, I had a sponsor from another radio station. That's and, amazing. And just, I, ma'am, I woke up, and this is a good thing. And the funny thing about it was uh, how uh, those things just came about. So it's, it's, it is a gamble. Now, some some of the things suggest that you, when you, you got to research this and research this, research this. And, and and some people may may not agree with me, man, because probably my, most of them will not. But for me, I didn't even do a business plan. I had no business plan whatsoever. I had no intention of doing a business plan. So it was let, me, let, let me ask you something, Clancy. So so oftentimes, and this is really this is oftentimes um, partners, romantic partners have some stake in what you're creating. So would you share a challenge you face when dealing with a romantic relationship while you're building your business and career? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Would you go, would you repeat that one more time, please? I missed sure. something. Sure. Please share a challenge you face dealing with a romantic relationship while you're building your business and career. Uh-huh. Well, while building this career, uh, my business career, I haven't had any relationship. I haven't been in any relationship. I uh, was in a relationship when it first started. And I would say if uh, if there's a, if you are in a relationship and if you if that person doesn't have confidence and going to build you up, move on. Okay? If you know that if they understand this is what your dream is, and, they, and, and their vision is, is, a, is a whole different direction, take your choice. 
You either go do what you got think is good for you, or you're going to do what you think may be good for them, he, whether it be he or her. But I will still say keep in mind about the percentages of successful relationships, whether they be long or short. Remember, okay, if you're going to be in a relationship, you don't have no time for no petty nonsense with no man or no woman. Who's this? What they own this book? What they own that for? Business is business, okay? And you are in the social in the, in, in the eye of the public, so you are going to get what's the word for it? Do we still want to call it fans? I want to call it. We about to say fans. And if you're a man, of course you own a single man. Sometimes. Uh, you know, you have to be single. But if you're a, a man and you're reaching and you're reaching some sort of uh, uh, point of success, then people are going to be coming at you. You have to know how. It's talking about in relationships, not only speaking of that, but you have to make sure that you can handle a relationship. It's not that's only, so can, true. Can, can, so can they handle it? Can you handle it? Yes, that is just so true. Thank you, Clancy. We have another question for you coming right up. But first, we want to hear your latest hit song, Mama, I Can't Breathe. Producer, Uh play that song. Now the world goes growing and throwing bricks. Why the officers, (laughs) they swing a six. And the world knows your name. George Floyd, my brother, you didn't die in vain. For a better way, and moving to the north was supposed to have meant a better day. I hope that there's his blackness, he can survive the strife. But systematic racism has taken his life. Mama, mama, oh, I can't breathe. They got their knees on my neck. Somebody stop them. When it came to driving, it never, never laid a hand. The cameras were on it as they watched him die. So, mama, 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 they couldn't tell a lie. Mama, mama, oh, I can't breathe. They got their knees on my neck. Somebody stop them. They just won't let me. Oh, can't you see? Take to the streets all across the land as they protest the murder of this land. And the world finds itself in awareness of this systemic life. Tweets, Instagram, and Facebook added to the fight. Mama, mama, oh, I can't breathe. They got their knees on my neck. Somebody stop them. Thought behind the song. 
I'm, I was right. Uh, I was watching the. Uh, this is all. This quite naturally is about George Floyd. I was watching his uh, funeral service with uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, and 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 it hit me where he that. When he he, had, he came down with several things about it, with your knees on my neck, I can't do this because you got your knees on my neck. I can't do that because you got your knees on my neck. And was talking about how he was crying out to his mama. And I sat there and watched that. And I watched that and watched that and got your knees on my neck. I couldn't shake that thought, got your knees on my neck. I wrote the song. Wrote the song and... uh Recorded it just simply. I was motivated as truly inspired by uh, Mama, Mama, I Can't Breathe was actually inspired. Now, the whole situation, of course, was inspired by the death, the killing, the murder of George Floyd. But the thought behind the song, Knees on My Neck, it all came from me listening to his his, his service. And when Al, Reverend Al Shotton started that, got your knees on that, it was up. It was, it was, once I, once I got the thought, it's over. I had, I knew, I knew I had the song once, once I had that thought. I knew the song was done. The song was good as done once I had that thought. And, uh, that, that's what really motivated me. So this was one of those, uh, one of those songs, uh, on that, that, now this is one of some that's gonna last a lifetime because we know that you're always gonna have police brutality. There's always gonna be social injustice. This is one of them songs that that don't go out just with the sad. This is a song that will be that should be people should be aware of from the time when oh when they were doing the Mark, uh Martin Luther King's thing when when the singers were singing uh. Uh, uh, Sam Cooke and all these other people were singing about these uh, motivated, spiritually motivated songs. This song here was spiritually motivated. I sat there and watched I got it, it, and the spirit hit me to hit that, write that song. You and know what? I want to. I just want to acknowledge you for um, having reverence for his life and. Um, having a really deep respect for the dignity of people. I really got it. That really is was the impetus for that self-expression, that song. You know, well, not I, just well, for, it, well, for me, maybe not just for George Floyd, but for others who have had, you know, experiences like his. So, so thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, and you know, there's going to be there's going to be a lot more. It's it's it will never ever ever end. I don't care who your president is. I don't care who the police chief is in your city or whatever. Okay, that we're gonna we're gonna systematically still have be, be, be uh, uh, pinpointed out. Okay, it's gonna happen. When I wrote that song, Mama, Mama, I Can't Breathe, it's, it, it's not over. It's not over. And, 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 I, and I hate for people to get sidetracked by the nonsense that's going on with with, the, with with Trump and all these things right now, to get sidetracked from the reality, our social, our social awareness. It's, he's actually making it more obvious by the things that's going on now that uh, <laughs> we need to be aware of. You know, Clancy, you you shared earlier about um, you know really being connected to God and really being connected to spirit, and God made us all, all humans. And yes, we're dealing with with the um, with some of the heartaches of the worst parts of humanity. There's always the possibility that we can rise above that because of our faith. So with, with that, what I'd like to do is play, have, um, uh, have your next song for our listeners entitled Cops Just Shot Me. 
Okay. We'd love to hear that. Producer, roll it. Let them roll. Challenge in writing and producing a cop just shot me. The biggest challenge in writing a cop just shot me was writing a song that reflected a 
peaceful awareness of what was going on and this uh, pinpointing and all the black uh, uh, men and that they were being shot by the officers. So I wanted to make it that so people would understand. I'm not I'm not promoting violence on this song, people. You're not understanding what the song is saying. When it said, what you going to do, what you going to do, you're going to get on your knees and pray. That's what the song is telling you to do. The song isn't about going out starting violence. The song isn't about uh, 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 criminalizing every police officer because you can't function without law. Society cannot function without law. To think that to be fun or to uh, stop uh, law enforcement, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of in my life, quite frankly. There is no, without law, there is no order. But if you're going to have some law, you got to have some justice. And sometimes that justice comes from you praying to the Father. I need you. Mm-hmm. I need well, you right now. Your people need you. Clancy, you know, I really got that you're really committed to making a difference in your music. So I do have one more final question from our survey. Mm-hmm. And that yes. question is, what are the three pitfalls you have seen people fall into when it comes to having a successful business or an entertainment career? Ooh, Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, what would I call a pitfall? First of all, some of the pitfalls that you may, that you don't want to get to is knowing rejection, because you're going to get rejection. You're going to mm-hmm. get, you're going to get to pitfalls. Is now that when you're submitting music, if, if one person that that hears it doesn't like it, your music could be good. Okay, that's one of the big pitfalls, pitfalls right now. I'm feeling with R and B. We only are getting on internet radio stations instead of everybody opening up to us. If we didn't have the internet radio stations, how much of this music would you be hearing? Of my music or any other uh, any other thing? If they, uh, especially if they're independent. Now, if they're signed out, the record company may be another whole different story. But if you're independent like myself, I write what I feel like. I'm not controlled by uh what somebody else tells me I need to write or say. So that's one of the pitfalls is being independent. You got to re- realize you're going to get a lot of rejection. You're going to okay. get a lot of rejection. Okay. What other, pit- and, what other two pitfalls have you seen people fall into? Um, now, because uh, because I don't do a lot of uh, out, uh, out with crowds and things of that, and, that for, and I'm new to the business, uh, it's hard for it's really it's really truly hard for you to say another pitfall that you may have fall through, but don't 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 fall into the oh don't fall into the pitfall thinking you're gonna be rich overnight. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, that's, you, that's, you you're on point with that one. one. That's, hey, pitfall number one. Sir, I don't know why I think I should write that shit this first why I why I release this first song, I'm gonna be a rich man. <laughs> Well, that's actually a pitfall in life that people often have, right? That they think yeah. that, you know, I just do a couple of things and all of a sudden I'm going to become, a, you know, a multimillionaire. Yeah. And, it's, and it's just, it's, 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 that's not realistic, okay? Or another pitfall is thinking that because you didn't, is that your music is no good. Because after you start putting out a song or two, you're going to get an audience. You may not sound good to that person. But you're going to hit another person just right on time, okay? So the, the pitfalls of thinking that somebody else rejected you, that you're no good, don't fall into the pitfall of thinking that my music isn't worthy. It is, okay? So don't fall. Those would be those would be my those would be my pitfalls for the for, the, for at the moment, okay? And uh, I do have one more question for you, really. Because, you know, you're a renaissance man. You, you know, Vietnam veteran, record yeah. producer, entertainer, nurse, school teacher. What do you, for you, what do you think is the the biggest pitfall you've seen people fall into when it comes to just life in general? 
It's thinking that they can only do one thing. Thinking that you can only do this kind of thing. Okay? No. No, no. You have a mind. Put your mind to work. You're sitting around, you're hanging out, chilling. Take time to know thyself. Okay? You can't know thyself if you're spinning it around, hanging out with the felons or the women drinking and smoking 24 hours of the day. You need time to think. You need time to have a good relationship with the father. There's just a whole bunch, a bunch of other things. But it's, it's just it's, it's a hard call on that one. It's a hard call on that one. Uh, so that's. I, I think that's actually, you know, that's really awesome advice, really, that you don't. <laughs> You're not limited to one thing, and really, no. you know, life is just really and, limited, and you, limitless, and full of possibilities. So that was a really great point. But you made. also, but you also have to know how to move on if that wasn't for you. Because sometimes what you think is for you isn't for you. Was not for you, and you have to accept. I wasn't. I was not. This was not. What, I've tried a bunch of different things. Uh, housing, you know, buy, buy property, things like that. But I didn't let uh, those things uh, stop me. If I was no good, if I wasn't any good at it, I simply was no good at it. And being and being really on you know, that, no, I, this this was this wasn't for me. And it's just like when you say you, I had, I'm really such a man. I've done some of everything. Okay, uh, but I knew some things just wasn't meant for me to be, and I accepted them. But I did all my things. I did all. I really, and it was funny because people think just because you write and student things like that. I said I probably be. I still my needs probably more than the average man does, and uh, so you just have to have that. That faith. Then we go get back to back to the faith and uh Yeah, leap of faith. Uh, and believe that you can do more than one. You have a mindset where people have told you that you can't be no one, you can't do anything, and I tell you, don't miss it to them. Go for your dreams. That's my best answer I have for you. Go for your dreams, but realistically speaking though, dreams Come action by action. You can't just want it. You have to sacrifice. That's the word we're looking for. Sacrifice. 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 Every time I find a song, I had to sacrifice. Because everything I did, now, that, which, which, now here's one thing you're talking about now. When you're talking about, and this is going to be hard for me to please, uh, ma'am, I have. What, 16 songs playing worldwide on the radio right now. 16. In four years, I have 16 songs playing on the 16. And I'm That's not my quite an music. accomplishment. 16. And I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to tell you something right now. You don't have to be rich. You got to have faith. You got to have some common sense because I've done that on Social Security Check. I built this company on a social security check, and if I'm lying, I'm flying. I well, built that it you built it on that, but you. Security. But what I'm clear about from what you've been sharing throughout is that you build it on the foundation of your faith. I certainly so, did. Yeah, I have to tell you, this has been a really, really great conversation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rick Clancy, for sharing your wisdom. So. Clancy, how can our listeners learn more about what you're up to and follow your music? Okay. Now, you can also you can follow me on YouTube, of course. They can follow me on basically, basically all major uh, uh, distribution outlets, Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, Spotify, and YouTube. I think I have about 11 or 12 songs on YouTube. If you look up, if you look me up, and we have my my, my I have the web page, uh, your baby cyber records. Uh, dot com what's slash. Your, what's your UR, Can you share your URL so we can learn more? Uh, for uh, for which one? For uh, for your website. Oh, it's uh, your baby 
That's all in one word and lower caps. Yo, baby, cyber records dot com slash forward slash radio. Okay. Or they can find me, as I mentioned to you, Google Carrie. If you go to YouTube, guys, Google Carrie W. Clancy. And then there will be, I think, 11 to 14 songs, I think, that I've downloaded to to YouTube. <laughs> Excuse me. But that's how you'll find me. You can find me under that. Of course, you can find me under, if you need, like to reach me, under clancy.carry at yahoo.com. And you can find me on Instagram. And you can find me on Twitter. So. Well, I can tell you our listeners are looking forward to um, listening to more of your work as your creative juices are flowing. So once again, well, thank you for being our guest. It was really great. And thank, thank you for, you for listening. Uh, I am, I it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad. That I really enjoyed having you. And, well, you know, thank you for listening. I am Nicole W. And you've been listening to Men, Relationships, and Other Fables. Until next time. <laughs>